Hello and welcome to my first book haul of the new year. I'm really excited to share with you guys all of the books that I've picked up recently. I haven't gone too crazy but um, sorry if I do sound a little bit stuffy. I am getting over <laughs> being sick but we're gonna still power through this and I wanted to share with you guys first before we go into all the books the first selection of books I did receive and these were thanks to Book of the Month who is kindly the sponsor for this video. I'm super excited to be working with them to um, just share their awesome book service with you guys. I have loved them for years. Um, I was able to receive this month's selections and they have a really good selection of books. Like every month they go through hundreds of books and new releases and give us a really nice curated selection. If I were to be choosing one for myself this month, I definitely would be going with Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. This one is actually a new release from Feb uh, coming out in February. And this book was already on my radar, so I'm super excited to get to reading this book soon. They also sent an add-on, which is The Maid by Nita Prose. And you can always um, like add extra books to your box. So this isn't one of the selections for the month. This is the one you can add as an add-on to your choice, or you could just make it your choice for the month. This one is a fun like mystery thriller book that I had also had on my radar previously. Book of the Month is definitely the best way to get new release hardbacks for a good price because you know new release hardbacks are expensive and you typically have to pay full price or new. and then anytime there's a month where you want to skip for the month it's very easy to do that as well i love how book of the month has such a good variety of even like different genres like we have um, mystery thriller picks historical fiction contemporary fiction romance so there's really something here for everyone and so like i said i'll leave the uh code down for you guys down below if you want to go ahead and check it out and thanks again to the book of the month for sponsoring this video so i'm definitely going to be <laughs> including these books from book of the month as books in my book haul um, i'll go ahead and show you guys the actual covers and the author so first we have reckless girls by rachel hawkins this one is a mystery thriller book and i have read a book from rachel hawkins before i believe but now i'm blanking on which one it was but i have not really read too many mystery thrillers lately so i'm really hoping to prioritize this one soon then we have a historical fiction novel it's the magnolia palace by fiona davis we have fiona and jane by jean chen ho i don't remember too much what this one was about i believe it's about two best friends and yeah we're following two young taiwanese american women and this one sounds like a contemporary novel. And we have a romance novel, Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. I haven't really um, experimented with reading too much romance books myself, but if I am in the mood for one, then I guess I will have one to choose from. And then we have Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. I believe that this one is a contemporary book and they were following yeah it takes place in california and we're following um a woman who's like the matriarch of the family i believe and she passes away and she leaves this inheritance to her two children which is a traditional caribbean black cake and that kind of just starts off the rest of the story and then lastly we have the maid by nita prose and this one is a mystery thriller um it kind of seems like it could be a little bit more on the humorous side as well we're following molly gray she i believe is a maid and she's having like she finds um like one of the hotel guests dead in the room and then somehow she has to help figure out what's going on so right before i got sick last week i got the email from barnes and noble that they were having all of the hardbacks half off on last sunday and i definitely could not pass that up i was telling myself i wasn't going to spend money on books but i mean come on a half price sale at barnes and noble is not something that you turn down so i made my sister go with me that morning and we were in um santa cruz at the time so i went to the closest barnes and noble which was in san jose and i limited myself i was in there for probably like two hours and i ended up picking up only six books and actually most of them are non-fiction so let me just show you guys them they're very beautiful books and i'm super excited to get to them so the first one we have is Bibliophile Diverse Spines by J Jimmy Harper and Jane Mount. This is one book that has been on my wish list for a long time. I do have the original Bibliophile book, but I like that this book expands upon the first one and the illustrations in here are just really gorgeous and there's so many good book recommendations. In this book, I've already like pretty much flipped through every page and I just love how it um, 
we get different like influential book people to check out, different types of lists of books, even bookstores to go to, and this one is all about um, bringing more diverse books to the forefront as well as an expansion for the or from the original Bibliophile book and I just love this book so much. I think that this is a great resource if you're looking for more diverse books to add to your bookshelves. Next we have the only fiction book that I picked up while I was at Barnes & Noble and that is Dear Miss Metropolitan by Carolyn Farrell. Um, I don't so some of these books I didn't think that I had heard of before but then I was looking at my list of books from last year that I had like anticipated were coming out and I believe some of these were on there. I'm not sure if this one was. Obviously what first drew me to this book was the beautiful cover when I had seen it when I was browsing but then when you open it there's also a map here too and that really intrigued me as well. So it looks like this book is a little bit of a mystery almost I want to say. I believe we're following three main characters who are abducted by this man and only two of them are found when they're rescued and it just sounds like a really good mystery thriller. This is great because I pretty much have not, besides the ones I'm talking about in this video, I've read pretty much all the mystery thrillers that I have on my shelves so I definitely need to stock up. The next book we have is a nonfiction book. It's called Wake, the Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Revolts by Rebecca Hall and illustrated by Hugo Martinez. This book is part memoir, part graphic novel, and it's following this history of the women-led slave revolts. Um, I'll show you a little bit of what the illustration style looks like. It looks like all the illustrations are mostly in black and white, and that looks really cool. I do like to read graphic novels from time to time, and I feel like mixing graphic novels in the nonfiction genre is really cool. I feel like mixing together graphic novels with nonfiction books, it makes it easier to consume nonfiction novels, especially if you have a little bit of a harder time um, concentrating on nonfiction for long periods of time when you're reading. Then we have All That She Carried, The Journey of Ashley Sack, A Black Family Keepsake by Taya Miles. Um, I forget now, I'm blanking on the award that this book just won, but that's kind of what put it on my radar um, a few weeks ago, so when I came across this one at the bookstore I definitely had to pick it up. This book is written by a black historian and it's tracing the life of a single object handed down through three generations of black women and I believe it's a sack and it starts out in 1850s South Carolina with this sack that belonged to an enslaved woman and then going through the different generations following after her. This book um, has won awards, so I feel like I trust that this will be a good nonfiction book that I will be able to read and enjoy. <laughs> then we have Why She Wrote. This is a graphic history of the lives, inspiration, and influence behind the pens of classic women writers by Lauren Burke and Hannah K. Chapman, illustrated by Kaylee Bales. So we have another graphic novel that's also incorporating um, nonfiction. This one is history in it and following the stories of different women writers, like here's one here, Jane Austen, for example. So there's a lot of illustrations and then there's text as well as more um, illustrations for like the graphic novel. This is like super cute. I love the illustration style on this and I like I love the fact that this is pretty looks like full color. So I'm excited to get to read about some of these. I'm sure some of these authors I've read from before and some of them I haven't, so that's really cool. And the last book that I picked up from Barnes and Noble, I have to say, is completely a cover buy because I don't even know what it's about, but it was just so gorgeous when I seen it on the shelves. I knew I was gonna buy it no matter what it was about. And this is called McSweeney's 63. Um, this one I was a bit disappointed to find out when I got home. I was looking at the receipt. It wasn't half off, but this was a hardcover book. But this is a short story collection and it looks like it's by Stephen Dixon. But when I look more into it, it looks like this possibly is like a quarterly magazine or like a literary journal that comes out, but they just do it in hardcover. So that would make sense why it wasn't part of the half off books because as I'm looking here it looks like there are quite a few authors in this and there's um looks like short stories letters um but yeah Stephen Dixon is not the only author on this so I'm sure once I read a little bit more I'll be able to learn a little bit more about what this is about and if I do enjoy it this is really cool because if they come out with one of these every quarter I will definitely be interested in picking more up because this is such a beautifully designed book and like 
probably the most beautiful one that I've purchased out of all these books that I got. And lastly, I have some books to share with you guys that I picked up from Book Depository. They weren't having a sale or anything. I just felt like picking up some books a while back. And so, um, most of these are books that are parts of series that I was needing anyway. Um, three of them I am currently reading right now. Uh, two of the books I actually don't have with me. I'm waiting for them to be shipped still. I'm reading the Lilith's Brood uh, trilogy from Octavia Butler. Right now I'm currently reading the second one, Adulthood Writes. Um, the third one, Imago, which is also a beautiful cover as well. I'll show you guys how it looks right here. It's on its way and I'll be reading that one in the month of February. The premise of this series, I love Octavia Butler. She's honestly one of my favorite authors of all time and I've kind of just been slowly reading her books because I don't want to read all of them, um, but I decided I was going to read another of her series this year. So. This one is following the world after there's been like this nuclear war. There's an alien race that has basically um, taken some people from Earth and preserved them so that they can continue to live. But it seems like there's wanting to, they want a sort of an interchange of DNA, genes type stuff. And um, I can't really say too much about what the second one is about, but that's basically what's going on. The first one, we're following Lilith, who has been woken up from her sleep and she doesn't know what's going on. The next series I got was The Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. This is the second book in the Live Ship Traders trilogy and the first, four, the fourth book in the entire of 16 books in the Realm of the Elderlings series. This book is a chunky one. I did not know it was going to be this big. It's 900 pages. Robin Hobb's books so far, all of the ones I've read, have been very long, but they don't take a long time to get through because at least for this trilogy, The Live Ship Traders, I feel like there's a lot of stuff going on. The first trilogy, um, The Assassin's Apprentice trilogy, that one took me a little bit longer to get through because we are only following one person, like one character perspective and we're in his head all the time and it, that one took me a little bit longer to get through but this one we have a lot of characters that we're following and I'm really enjoying reading all their perspectives pretty much so I'm flying through these this book series I can't like I have to keep telling myself to put it down <laughs> because I'm not trying to finish it so fast I'm not even one okay I'm trying not to give even like a whole <laughs> synopsis and review and everything that's not what this video is for but I am not one who's really drawn too much to fantasy series a lot I'm not drawn to books specifically about pirates and like on the sea types of stuff but Robin Hobb's writing makes it that I'm really enjoying reading this series and I was worried was I was, I was not sure <laughs> and I was a little bit worried going to the series because I wasn't sure I was gonna like reading about the whole um, being on a boat pirate setting but so far I'm really enjoying it and the only book I purchased from book depository that was not part of a series was men be reaped by Jasmine Ward this is her memoir I'm really mad at myself that I haven't picked up any other books from Jasmine Ward before because I really enjoyed um, Salvage the Bones by her. I believe I read that one like a year or two ago and I've been meaning to ever since then pick up something else from her and so I decided to go with the, this memoir and I think she's looking at the community that she comes from which is De Lisle, Mississippi. Um, if it's anything like her fiction writing I'm sure this will be a uh, memoir that I enjoy. And then lastly, the last four books are all part of the same series from the same author and that's Frank Herbert's Dune series. Um, this series, I think actually I picked this up from Target. I don't think actually I lied to you guys. I did not buy these from, <laughs> from Book Depository. I bought this from Target. So Target was having a sale um, during Black Friday, which they have kind of periodically throughout the year. So keep an eye out if you live near Target, buy two books, get one free and it also works online so I was able to purchase these books online but what I didn't realize was I purchased them not exactly the same so these three are all the same size this book is quite a bit bigger than the rest but it's fine it's still the same thing and so I'm reading this one right now which is the third book in the Dune series Children of Dune but then I also picked up the rest of the series which is uh, God Emperor of Dune, Heretics of Dune, and Chapter House Dune so I'm planning on reading one of these a month until I run out of them. And then I haven't really shared too much of my thoughts with the series yet and I do kind of want to save it for my wrap up, but I will say, like it's not something I would recommend to everybody. Uh, half the time I know you don't know what's going on, but I do like that I feel like it's a challenge when I'm reading it, trying to understand like what the author is trying to say and what's going on with the world and the deeper meanings of things and I will be honest some of the stuff just goes straight over my head but I am still able to follow the major plot points 
pretty well so I am going to be con continuing this series. And I forgot to mention with the Mad Ship I also ordered the next one on Book Depository which is, uh, I'm forgetting the name now but I'll show a picture here because they sent me the wrong book they sent me. I will show you guys what book they sent me. I never heard of this book before. Um, it's called Humankind, A Hopeful History by Rutger Bregman. Um, I kind of flipped through it. It's just really nothing I have any interest in reading anytime soon, so I'm probably just going to be unhauling this book soon. I was very disappointed that it was not the book that I wanted to receive, but um, when I emailed them, they were able to reship the correct book so hopefully that's book sitting at my parents house right now because obviously with me being sick with covid i have just been quarantining in my apartment for the past 10 days <laughs> those are all the books that i wanted to share with you guys for this first book haul thanks for staying along for the whole journey with me as i showed you all these books uh once again thank you to book of the month for sponsoring this video and don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all of my new videos i'm going to be putting out this year and i'll see you guys soon bye